Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt and this is Secondhand Home Theater. Today we're on to video number four in my themed week of videos leading up to Alien Romulus on Friday, August 16th, where I'm talking about the Alien franchise. And here today, I'm just kind of shooting from the hip. I'm talking about some of my favorite memories growing up watching these films. And I'm just gonna talk about them here in this video and then go from there. So hopefully this video will be entertaining and not gonna have hopefully a whole bunch of editing in there, but let's get on to the actual video and let me share some memories about my experiences with these films. So yeah, I'm just gonna kinda go off the cuff and just talk about some of my memories about these films. Hopefully this won't drag on too long. I, I don't wanna just drone on and bore people with this. But I'm gonna start out with the earliest memory I have in watching these movies. And I actually talked about this in one of my very first videos. I think this was like the third or fourth video I ever posted. It'll be linked up in the corner. I apologize in advance, it's pretty rough. <laughs> I was really just kind of stumbling my way through this YouTube thing at the time, and the equipment I had was not very good. So you can click on that and watch it. It's like a half hour long. Uh, I don't begrudge anyone for not watching it <laughs> because it's not the greatest quality. But in that video, I talk about what I'm gonna kind of summarize and talk about here today, and this will probably be a much better production than what that video is. But you can definitely click on that if you wanna see kind of one of my earliest videos on this channel. So yeah, my earliest memory watching one of these films, and honestly, it's one of the earliest memories I have in terms of just watching a more adult-oriented film in general, was watching the Aliens film on an old VHS tape that my dad had. It's the old CBS Fox logo VHS tape. And like I mentioned in the other video that you know will be linked up here, I was a big wrestling fan. I still am. I still have a ton of wrestling stuff here, and I catch wrestling you know, whenever I can, when I have free time and if it interests me. But I was huge into wrestling when I was younger. And my dad and I made it a point, we would always watch Saturday morning or Sunday morning wrestling way back in the early 90s. And my mom and my sisters were gone out doing something. And it was just me and my dad at home. And we were watching some form of wrestling on TV, which I, I can't remember what we were actually watching. But we were watching wrestling and I left the living room where we were watching this and went off to my bedroom or whatever. I just left and I was gone for quite a while. I was gone so long that the wrestling show had either ended or my dad had just gotten tired of it and turned it off. And he was watching what I would come to find out later on is Aliens on VHS. And when I came back, I was admittedly upset that wrestling wasn't on. Uh, but, you know, looking back on it, I obviously was not entertained because I shouldn't have left the room or wouldn't have left the room if, you know, it was actually entertaining me. But when I got back, we were watching Aliens and I asked my dad, hey, can we put the wrestling on or whatever, tried to convince him to turn the movie off. And my dad's like, no, let's sit. Maybe we'll watch wrestling again later uh, after the movie's over or whatever. And so he's like, why don't you just sit down and watch this with me, more or less, you know. And so I sat there and I was kind of, you know, eh begrudgingly like, okay, fine, I'll watch this. But I started watching it and I vividly remember the very first scene I ever saw is when they're in the med lab and they're looking at all the specimens of the face huggers in the tanks and the face hugger gives you the jump scare and hits against the tank and you know scares all the Marines and Burke and everyone who's looking at it. And it got me and immediately I was hooked. And I sat and watched the rest of the movie with my dad on that old VHS tape. And I was just hooked. And I just, from that moment on, I was engrossed in the world of Aliens. And at the time, I did not realize Aliens was a sequel. At the time, because I was young, 
I thought Aliens was just a standalone movie. Just called Aliens. Like, that makes sense. Aliens, there's aliens in it. Like, that makes sense. So, I didn't realize that Aliens was a sequel to Alien. So, it wasn't until much later on, I'm talking probably a good five, six, seven years down the road, that I actually realized that Aliens was a sequel to the original Alien. And my dad, for some reason, never owned an original Alien VHS tape when I was younger. He only had Aliens. And so I, again, never knew that it was a sequel. And so later on, my grandmother or my mom or my dad or somebody for, it was either a birthday or for Christmas, got me the special edition VHS of the original Alien, which actually I think was sourced similar to one of the Laserdisc releases from the 90s. But they got me the version that came on VHS. And so that was the first time I got to see the original Alien movie. And as I've mentioned in a couple of my other videos, looking at it now, all these years later and through all my years of watching the original Alien movie, on home media and then eventually going to see the 4k re-release restoration that i've talked about in a bunch of these videos and that i made a video about that'll be linked up here earlier this year i have a much higher appreciation of that movie and what that movie did and its cultural uh relevance and pop culture you know relevance and influence that i didn't understand back in the 90s when i first saw it i really always had a more nostalgic kinship with Aliens because I saw that movie first. But when I got to see the original Alien, I was a little bit older and a little bit more well-versed in movie watching and stuff like that. I had a little bit more mature mindset to, to me. And I could definitely see the merits of that movie. And then I understood how Aliens was a sequel. And little things that I just took for granted that I thought were just part of the story of Ripley, you know, being out in space for 57 years and all this stuff and how she knew about this other ship. Like, I just thought that was part of the story. Like, I didn't realize that there was a whole nother movie based around that. I just thought it was a, a character backstory to kind of get this person, you know, get Ripley into the situation. But then I got to see the original movie, like I said, on VHS, and I understood now how those movies were linked. But before I even got to see the original Alien on VHS, my first exposure to another movie in the franchise was actually Alien 3. So after watching Aliens when I was younger, in the early 90s, a few years later, so a little bit down the line of when it was actually released, we got an Alien 3 VHS tape which was the old school, you know, 4-3 pan and scan VHS tape with Ripley in her like prisoner kind of outfit just on the cover with kind of an orangish brown background. And I watched that tape a bunch after we got it. So I was like completely reinvigorated with the series when Alien 3 showed up at our house on VHS. And as I mentioned in a previous video, looking back on it, some of the effects like the CGI and some of the story plot points and stuff aren't very good, especially in the theatrical version. But at the time when I would have seen this in the mid 90s, this was like the coolest thing I had ever seen. And the CGI alien crawling on the ceiling and on the walls and the weird disorienting camera effect they do of the alien chasing uh, all the prisoners. Oh man, that was like, the, the most awesome, the coolest thing I had ever seen in a movie up until that point. And again, looking at it now, that stuff really pales in comparison to the two original movies with the practical effects that they used. But at the time, oh man, that was like the coolest thing ever. And as I mentioned in my previous videos, at that point in time in my life, my sisters and I and my cousin, who is around the same age as me, we played Aliens all the time, and we would get our Nerf guns, and we would just play Aliens in our living room at my house. We would go down to the basement of the house that we lived in at the time. If the weather was nice and my parents would allow it, we'd go out in the backyard, and we would just play Aliens. And not only would we play the part where in Aliens, they go through the air duct in the tunnel, 
uh, you know, and they're running with Newt and we would pretend we'd be crouching down running with our Nerf guns and the aliens are chasing us and I'd be there doing the Hicks thing, putting my hand up to my head for my little headset, make-believe headset and quoting all the lines and everything. Not only did we do that, but we also recreated and, and played the scene out of the alien chasing everyone through the corridors and then into the mold. Uh, you know, and we'd be running around and pretending to be pressing the buttons and we'd kind of converge those two scenes from the two movies together. And in our minds kind of made it like one logical kind of piece of a puzzle, you know, to recreate those scenes as kids to play. Alien 3 took over my life for a while and I just, I loved that so much. And it struck me weird at the time. I was like, why is this called Alien 3? because there's not three aliens in it. I mean, technically, I guess, because there's the egg with the face hugger that puts the alien in Ripley, and then there's the face hugger that creates the main alien antagonist in the film, you know, whether it's a dog or an ox, depending what version you're watching. And then there's that alien, and then there's the one inside Ripley. So kind of there could have been, you know, you could have phrased that as three aliens, but. When I was growing up, I was like, why is this called Alien 3? Because I had not seen the original Alien. I had seen Aliens, which I thought was a standalone, and then I thought Alien 3 was a sequel to Aliens. But I was like, why is it Alien 3? Is it because there's three aliens? Like, you know, it kind of didn't make sense to me, but I kind of overlooked that because I was just so in enthralled with, as I said, the rather ropey CGI at the time and everything that was going on in that movie. And so, like I said, we would play, and I just, it took over my life for a while. And then it was after that that I originally saw the original Alien on that VHS tape. And like I said, I had a new appreciation for the series and I could really understand the roots of the Alien and where everything came from. But also during this time in the mid-90s, the early to mid-90s, a lot of kids of that era watched Aliens, watched Predator, watched Robocop, watched Terminator. You know, all these things that Probably by today's standards, a lot of parents would maybe shy away from letting their kids see until they're older. But like my parents and friends of mine and their parents and stuff, they let us watch these things when, you know, we're like five, six, seven, eight years old, nine years old, you know? And so Kenner and Dark Horse Comics and all these things played into that. And they created toys, you know, action figures based on the series of movies for like Aliens and then uh, like Predator and Terminator and some other stuff that's not really relevant to this necessarily. So they made all these toys and then comic books came along that talked about these new stories of comics and everything. And so I was caught up in that aspect of it too. And I had a whole bunch of Aliens toys from the Operation Aliens line of toys that they started in the early 90s. But I had a bunch of that stuff and I actually still own a bunch of those to this day. They're over off to the side on my wall. You know, I still have a, a bunch of those figures. And I was super in, enamored with that sort of aspect of it too. But I also enjoyed the comic books. I would read some of the comic books I could get my hands on of that time period. Every now and then I would, every once in a while, get one for maybe an older cousin or like an uncle or my dad or my grandmother or something. If we went to the store, I might be able to like get one if we went somewhere that had one. But I was just kind of caught up in the extended universe a little bit, more so than any other series of movies or cartoons or anything that I had watched at the time. But the one aspect of this extended universe that planted a little alien egg in my mind that grew for like 10 years or whatever it was in my brain was when I eventually got to see Predator 2, the sequel to Predator, which I saw that for the first time on like cable TV in the mid 90s. So it was a few years after it had released theatrically. And of course it was edited for TV at the time. It wasn't a premium channel like HBO that would have shown all the gore and everything. It was edited for TV. It was on like a Sunday movie or something. But I remember I was at my grandparents' house, their old house where my mom grew up and watching it in the living room with my grandmother and Danny Glover's character it's at the end of the movie, goes into the Predator ship, and on the trophy wall in the ship is an alien skull. And just, poof, that blew my mind. 
that completely blew my mind because as much as I loved Aliens, I also loved the original Predator movie that I watched a bunch on that old CBS Fox label that my dad had on VHS. Uh, well, I enjoy Predator, it's kind of a little bit lower than Aliens to me because I saw a little bit later on. But I love both those franchises. And when I saw that Easter egg for the first time of that alien skull on the Predator's trophy wall, it just blew my mind. I, it completely changed my outlook of, I cannot believe that these creatures, these aliens, the Predator and the alien are in the same universe and they've interacted. And like I said, it planted the seed in my brain of Aliens versus Predator. And it was something that I held on to for over a decade. And I would go in and get the toy line of Aliens vs. Predator. I would read the comic books that came out over the years. And I remember hearing rumblings throughout the 90s and into the early 2000s that they were going to make an Aliens vs. Predator movie. And that was like the coolest, biggest thing that my brain could like conceive for a major movie was that it was Aliens versus Predator. But we'll get to that here in just a minute. But continuing down kind of chronologically through everything, as I mentioned in my previous video, the very first Alien movie, and at that time the only Alien movie I ever got to see in an actual theater environment was Alien Resurrection. When I found out that that movie was coming out, I remember seeing the trailers. And at this point I was older, this was 1997, I was 10 years old. And so I was super excited to go and see that movie. And I really had to convince my parents to go and see that at the movie theater because they didn't know if they wanted to take me, even though I had watched all these films on VHS, they never went to the movies really to see movies like that. They would always see them when they came home on home video, either through rentals or through buying the tapes. So I really had to convince my parents and mainly I, I had to work on my dad. I convinced my dad because I knew my dad loved these movies and I really played it on him of like, dad, come on, like, don't you want to go see it? <laughs> you know, like, don't you want to see it at the movie theater? Like, maybe you should tell mom that you want to go see it and it'd be a good idea to take me with, <laughs> you know? Anyways, but so we were able to convince my mom and, and we went to the movie theater and that was the first time and only time at that point I got to see an actual alien movie on the big screen in a proper movie theater, proper surround sound, the, the whole thing and see it in proper widescreen because up to that point I had only ever seen pan and scan versions of the first three movies. So that holds a lot of nostalgia, not as much as seeing the original aliens for the first time when I was younger, but that was the first movie theater experience I had with the franchise. And so Alien Resurrection, as I mentioned in my previous video, maybe is slightly higher on my list than some other people because I have that connection of that's the first movie in this franchise I got to see at a proper theater. And then of course, we rented the VHS tape and I was completely caught up in the trailer for the video game that was on that VHS tape. Granted, that version of the game never came out and it basically got scrapped and retooled into a port with a kind of a reskin of the Alien Trilogy game that came out on the original PlayStation, just with like an updated setting and the characters were a little different to replicate Alien Resurrection. But that initial computer game uh, trailer that was on that VHS tape like blew me away with the graphics at the time and the gameplay that it teased, I was just like, oh man, like this would be so awesome to get this game when it comes out. And then of course it never did and the version that came out was not the same. But that would not be the only time I got to see an alien movie on the big screen because right around this time in the early 2000s, rumbling started coming out and with the internet being a little more prevalent, I was able to actually go to some websites to check up on this and they were talking about how Aliens vs. Predator was actually going to happen. That they were legitimately going to make it this time. Because there had been rumors and innuendo about this movie dating all the way back to Predator 2 in the early 90s. But nothing ever came of it. And so when they really were pushing, no, this is really going to happen. And I was reading a few little like news stories on some of the movie websites and AVP.com actually came around and it was the legitimate movie site 
And then when the initial Aliens vs. Predator trailer dropped, and I vividly remember downloading that stupid trailer over dial-up internet, and it took like all day to download that thing, and I had to plead with my mom to not use the telephone so that I could download the stupid like two-minute trailer that took like six hours to download. But I remember watching that trailer on old school, tiny little, whatever, like 140p quality real player like thing on my old Windows computer. And I saw that trailer and I was just like, oh man, this is real. This is actually gonna happen. This is an interesting point I wanna make, not just about this movie series, but about hype in general. Now I'm gonna go out and just tell you up front, I don't dislike the original Alien vs. Predator movie. I actually think it's better than AVP Requiem, which is, I think, by far, if you were to group that into the entire series of Aliens and Predator movies, both standalone movies and the co-branded movies, AVP Requiem is far and away the worst movie, and I would probably consider that probably like an F, honestly. And so that one is completely out of out of the question. But the original AVP movie, I do think is a good movie. Is it, you know, up way at the top of the list in like an all-time classic? No, but I think it's kind of in line with Alien Resurrection. It kind of falls right in line right there. It's, it's not terrible, but it's definitely not as good as it could have been. But the point I'm gonna make here in talking about this, when I saw the alien skull in Predator 2 way back in the early 90s, and that put the seed in my brain that this movie could actually happen and that these alien creatures and the Predator coexist in the same universe. But on top of that, and more importantly, I had created a narrative and a situation and a story of Aliens vs. Predator in my mind. And I had concocted this entire story that had evolved over a decade of waiting for this movie to come out. And so when they actually announced the release date and it was actually coming out to the movie theater, which coincidentally it came out around my birthday, the year it released, when my mom told me as a birthday present we could go see it at the movie theater, I was extremely hesitant to say yes that I wanted to go see it. And it wasn't because I didn't want to see the movie that I, you know, had like lost my fandom and didn't want to see it. It was actually the opposite. It was the fact that I had built up such an enormous amount of hype and built up this story in my head for so long that I was afraid that the movie would never live up to my expectations and that it would ruin my fandom, that I would just hate the series following that. And so it took me a long time, so much so that we didn't even go see it when it did come out. I drug my feet and I kind of stumbled around so long to see it that we didn't even see it at the original first run movie theaters up in Chicago at the time. We actually finally went and I finally said, okay, let's go to see it later on in its release when it went to the second run theaters because I was so caught up in my own head that I don't know if I could see this. Like the trailer looks good, but I just don't know. Like the hype was so big in my brain. I, I had built up such an idea of what I expected this movie to be and action scenes and all the stuff that I had choreographed in my own brain of what could happen that I just felt like th this is gonna ruin it for me. You know, like I'm, I'm not gonna be able to watch this movie. It's not gonna live up to anything I've come up with and how am I gonna react? Like, how am I gonna cope with the fact that this movie could potentially be terrible and that it's gonna like ruin my fandom? But eventually, I caved. Eventually, the the idea of I have to see this at the movie theater. I may never be able to see another Alien vs Predator movie on a big screen, which at that time I never realized I'd have a home theater <laughs> or that they would make any more sequels following it. But you know, at that time, I was like, this is my last chance. This may be my only chance to see this. So I have to go. And I was pleasantly surprised. It, like I said, I enjoyed the movie. Of course, it never lived up to what I had in my brain. But how could it? You know, a, a decade's worth of a young kid's thoughts and crazy ideas of what they think is going to be in this movie. You could never live up to that. 
But it was okay, and I didn't regret going to see it, and it didn't ruin my fandom, which was my big concern. But it was all right, you know, and, and I, I thought it was an okay movie that years later I look at it now and think it's actually a lot better than some of the other movies that came after it. Uh, but they could have done so much more. And when it eventually came out years later, following the original theatrical release, when they released the unrated version on DVD and then Blu-ray, uh, I actually found that to be much better. Granted, the level of violence really wasn't all that different because they shot it as like a PG-13 movie. But the story had a little more time to breathe and it was longer and it was able to kind of develop more stuff. And I felt like the unrated version was better. And I think it gets a bad rap because, again, it's similar to like Prometheus and Alien Covenant that it gets wrapped up in AVP Requiem uh, in the orbit of that movie being so bad, it kind of just gets lumped together. Same like how Prometheus tends to get lumped with Alien Covenant. But in retrospect, I think it was all right. It wasn't terrible. And, uh, you know, I, I don't regret going to see it. So at, at this point, you know, I was still enamored with the franchise. And then I got the DVDs and I was able to re-experience all the movies at home and really get into all the background documentaries and really the actual making of the movies and the cultural impact of the films for all four of the original films and all that stuff. And that almost became more interesting to me than actually watching these movies because I had seen the movies so many times that I just wanted to see all the supplemental stuff. So that kind of like overtook my DVD buying of stuff, you know, throughout that time period of my life of where I really just wanted to see the supplemental features because I had seen these films so much and I could nearly quote every one of these movies from start to finish that I didn't really care so much to see the actual movie. I just wanted to see the background stuff. This franchise has stuck with me ever since that point going forward. I love this franchise. And then going to see Prometheus in the theater, you know, that became only the third time I ever got to see an alien movie in a movie theater environment, in a big big screen environment. And I got to go with my wife to go see that. And that movie was good, Alien Covenant, not so much. You know, in the Aliens vs. Predator Requiem, I didn't see it in a movie theater, I only rented it and watched it at home back in the late 2000s. Terrible. I mean, I'm glad that they went and made it a little more R-rated and, you know, a little bit more graphic in the violence, but overall that movie's terrible. Uh, but my fandom has always remained for these films. So I basically use these films now in this kind of time period of my life here in my home theater to demo a lot of equipment. So when I get a new projector, when I get a new Blu-ray player or receiver or a pair of speakers or whatever, I use a lot of these films and scenes from these films because I've seen them so much, I know how the scene should look. I know what the picture quality should look like. I know how the sound should look in a scene. I know sound should pan from left to right, or you should hear sound effects in a certain way out of speakers. It's always just stuck with me. This franchise has always been with me. And so now, leading into the final act of this video and going into you know my video tomorrow, that brings me to Alien Romulus. I'm extremely happy and excited, if you can't tell, for Alien Romulus to come out. Because when Disney acquired 20th Century Fox, I was not convinced and not sure that they were actually going to allow this franchise to continue. And that they were actually going to put effort and money and passion behind another project in this franchise. So to see them get Fetty Alvarez, who is a big fan of the series and respects the lore and respects what these films mean and what they've accomplished and giving him an actual budget and some free reign to go out and do what he wanted to do and to have Ridley Scott be on board as well to kind of just help school him and let him know you know how the series was created and really let a fan take over and make it a labor of love, you know, really does excite me and really makes me happy that they're showing reverence to the series that I wasn't initially convinced they were going to do. With that, like I said, I'm going to wrap up here. I, I'm sure I've been talking for quite a while and hopefully this was entertaining. You know, if I bored some people out there, I, I do apologize, but I just wanted to make this video as a bridge between 
my other more well-produced videos and then leading into what I'm gonna do tomorrow and just tell you guys why I love this franchise so much and all these memories that I have. And so I'm gonna close this video out and I just wanna say thank you again to everybody who's watched any of my videos and you know stuck with me on this channel. I really do appreciate it. As I always say, it is humbling to me that my channel has grown the way it has. And tomorrow is gonna be the fifth and final day of this series before Alien Romulus releases. And that's gonna be a video where I'm gonna talk about some speculations that I have and some theories and, you know, maybe just some wants of things that I wanna see in Alien Romulus when I go see it this weekend. And we'll catch you tomorrow on the final day of Alien Week before Alien Romulus is released. So thank you, I see you in the next video.